Accelera and Chevron hope to ease the hydrogen strain in California. Electric Hydrogen gets a massive tax credit, and Acme Group and Hydrogenius are looking to set up hydrogen corridors with liquefied organic hydrogen carriers. I'll go over all of this and give my thoughts on today's Hydrogen Podcast. So the big questions in the energy industry today are, how is hydrogen the primary driving force behind the evolution of energy? Where is capital being deployed for hydrogen projects globally? And where are the best investment opportunities for early adopters who recognize the importance of hydrogen? I will address the critical issues and give you the information you need to deploy capital. Those are the questions that will unlock the potential of hydrogen, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. Before I get started today, I wanted to give a quick shout out and a thank you to one of our listeners named Jonathan. I recently added a support the show button on our website to allow listeners to chip in if they wanted to help make the show better, and Jonathan was kind enough to help us in that regard. So if you are listening to this episode, Jonathan, I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Starting off today is a press release from March 28th, Accelera Electrolyzers to Power Chevron Solar to Hydrogen Project. Accelera by Cummins, the zero emissions business segment of Cummins Inc., will supply Chevron New Energies with a 5 megawatt electrolyzer system for the production of low carbon intensity electrolytic hydrogen in Lost Hills, California, a step towards scaling hydrogen infrastructure in the U.S. The project leverages the strategic agreement between Cummins and Chevron to stimulate the commercial and industrial adoption of hydrogen, renewable natural gas, and other alternative low-carbon intensity fuels in North America. The Chevron facility will consist of two Accelera proton exchange membrane electrolyzers to produce hydrogen on-site by utilizing solar power and non-potable produced water from Chevron's existing assets at the Lost Hills oil field in Kern County. The electrolyzer system will generate over two tons of hydrogen per day at fuel cell grade purity, enough to fuel 80 freight trucks for up to 600 miles. And a quote from Andreas Lippert, VP and general manager of electrolyzers for Accelera, we're excited to continue our collaboration with Chevron as we work towards shared goals of advancing the hydrogen ecosystem and lowering emissions. He says this new hydrogen production project in California will continue building on Accelera's hydrogen innovation and demonstrates the kind of partnership that enables the shift to zero emissions. Accelera Electrolyzer Technology powers more than 60 hydrogen refueling stations across the globe, including the first multimodal refueling station in the world in Antwerp, Belgium, capable of fueling cars, trucks, buses, and ships. Accelera also powers one of the world's largest PEM electrolyzer systems in operation in Bicancourt, Quebec. A 25-megawatt electrolyzer system for Florida Power & Light Company's Cavendish Next Gen Hydrogen Hub in Florida, which will be fully commissioned and operational in early 2024, and will power a 90-megawatt electrolyzer system in Varaness Carbon Recycling in Quebec to turn non-recyclable waste into biofuels and circular chemicals. Okay, so a great project moving forward in California, and this collaboration between Cummins Accelera and Chevron is proving to be worthwhile. California is really the only state in the U.S. with a hydrogen network, and users are constantly complaining about the availability of hydrogen, and rightfully so, as supply is constantly struggling to beat demand there. My hope is that this project in Kern County will be able to help with that demand, and the Lost Hills oil play sits between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Now, on the production numbers for the electrolyzers, from this press release, it sounds like each of these electrolyzers can produce one ton of hydrogen a day. Now, that may not seem like much, especially with all the talk of multiple million tons per year projects being announced, but it sounds like the goal of the hydrogen production is for fuel cell use and heavy-duty transportation. So, two tons a day should be enough to ease some of that hydrogen supply strain and allow the infrastructure to continue to build out in the state. Next, in a press release on April 4th, Electric Hydrogen receives $18.3 million transferable DOE tax credit for its Gigafactory in Massachusetts, bringing total Department of Energy support to $65 million. Electric Hydrogen announces the award of $18.3 million transferable tax credit from the Department of Energy, Department of Treasury, and the Internal Revenue Service under the Qualifying Advanced Energy Project 48C initiative funded by the Inflation Reduction Act for electrolyzer manufacturing at its Gigafactory in Devons, Massachusetts. 
Electric Hydrogen was selected for this award for its advancements in manufacturing technology, ability to serve large-scale commercial projects in the near term, and commitment to building out U.S. manufacturing capacity. Electric Hydrogen's low-cost electrolyzer stacks sit at the center of the company's fully integrated 100-megawatt electrolyzer plant a solution designed to deliver the lowest cost green hydrogen on Earth. Electric Hydrogen's proprietary electrolyzer stacks are core to how its 100 megawatt electrolyzer plant transforms project economics and unlocks pathways to the DOE's energy earthshot production cost target for green hydrogen of $1 per kilogram of hydrogen by 2031. In a quote from Jigish Trevetti, Electric Hydrogen's senior VP of manufacturing, we are honored and thrilled that the DOE has recognized the value of our scaled manufacturing approach. The DOE's continued investment will allow electric hydrogen to increase its rate of production on a timeline that can address the growing customer demand for green hydrogen. The Gigafactory will use innovative manufacturing technology coupled with proven practices from high volume industries like solar and automotive to produce reliable high quality electrolyzers in large volumes to meet growing demand. Once fully ramped up to its 1.2 gigawatt per year capacity, the Gigafactory's stacks will generate enough green hydrogen to eliminate up to 2.4 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. The manufacturing capacity outpaces the cumulative global installed capacity of electrolysis today. The Devon's Gigafactory's first electrolyzer stacks will be shipped later this year to a customer-sided project in southeast Texas. Okay, so a massive tax credit going to electric hydrogen, this following their $380 million Series C funding round that closed last October. And with this tax credit, things are looking good for electric hydrogen to steamroll forward in building out the facility in Beaumont with New Fortress. So congratulations to electric hydrogen. The hard work is paying off. And lastly, in an article in Gas World on April 8th, Molly Burgess writes, Acme and Hydro Genius to explore transcontinental green hydrogen corridor. Acme Group and Hydro Genius LOHC Technologies have joined forces to explore the feasibility of a large-scale hydrogen supply chain from Oman to Europe, as well as a hydrogen value chain between the U.S. and Europe. Unveiled today on April 8th with the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, the partnership will look to develop the supply chains from Acme's projects in Oman to supply hubs in Europe using liquid organic hydrogen carrier or LOHC technology. The green hydrogen produced by Acme at its project sites will be stored in LOHC and transported to Europe for industrial off-takers as well as the energy and mobility sectors. Hydrogenius believes its LOHC technology to be perfectly suited for large-scale hydrogen imports via maritime supply chains enabling viable and cost-effective import vectors to Europe. By safely binding hydrogen to the thermal oil LOHCBT in a chemical process, the volatile green molecules can be efficiently stored and transported at ambient pressure and temperature using the existing liquid fuel infrastructure. Torolf Pohl, Chief Commercial Officer at Hydrogenius LOHC Technologies added, Due to its inherent safety, LOHCBT is particularly suited for handling hydrogen in ports and urban environments, and it is hardly flammable, very stable, and has competitive volumetric storage density, enabling large-scale, long-distance hydrogen value chains without hydrogen losses. Acme further notes that the collaboration's opportunity to make clean hydrogen from the MENA region and the U.S. available to European off-takers in the mid to long term. Ashwani Ashwani Dudija, Group President and Director for Acme Group, believes green hydrogen is a real opportunity that can transform global energy systems and meet various decarbonization goals set by both industry and governments. He added, while some will continue to challenge the economic and technical feasibility, we have taken conclusive decisions on our Oman project and partnering with Hydrogenius to develop efficient logistics using LOHC is the next step in delivering cost-effective value proposition for our customers. Okay, so I recently had an amazing conversation with someone from Hydrogen Oman and got a great look at the scale and scope of their vision. They are already looking to produce 1 million tons a year by 2030 and over 8 million tons by 2050. 
That's a staggering amount, but I believe the demand will be there. And this hydrogen corridor between Oman and Europe is a great study to see how leveraging LOHCBT to transport that massive amount of hydrogen will do. And I would also say that this corridor analysis will play a huge role in global hydrogen trade. If the LOHCBT transport medium works as well as Hydrogenius believes it will, this could be a game changer for super large hydrogen exporters to deliver their product globally. All right, that's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always, if you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at the com. So until next time, keep your eyes up and honor one another. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www.thehydrogenpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.